Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is May 11th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about a recent extreme weather feature in Eastern Europe in which observed temperatures have hit as high as 84.2 degrees Fahrenheit along the Arctic Ocean coastline or approximately 29 degrees Celsius. And what we are, and I'm gonna also talk about the climate and weather features that have contributed to this extreme event and put them, put this particular event in context of recent features that have appeared in a similar way across the Northern hemisphere and in some cases uh, across the global climate environment. Now for this particular extreme weather event, what we are seeing is a, a transfer of very warm air from east of the Caspian Ocean region northward in through the Arctic Ocean coastline. And this map that I'm looking at is, is provided by Earth Null School. And what we're looking at is a um, surface temperature analysis that is provided by the global forecast system model. And you can see at this point that I've indicated during this time frame, which is about 0800 uh, local time, I'm sorry, 0800 local time to my current location, not in that region, uh, about 0, 0, 0.1100 UTC time. The temperatures ranged as high as uh, nearly 27 degrees Celsius in this monitor. And I'm gonna be showing a few other maps that, that provide the temperature information. Uh, second map that I wanna show you is the Climate Reanalyzer map, which looks at global temperature anomalies uh, based on the global forecast system model. And in this region that I was previously indicating, temperatures have ranged as high as 20 degrees Celsius or, or 36 degrees. Fahrenheit above normal. That's that's a very extreme departure from normal. Unfortunately, we've tended to see these extreme departures from normal more and more frequently as both the Earth environment has warmed up due to increased atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations, primarily driven by fossil fuel burning, and also due to a feature called polar amplification which tends to result in a more rapid warming of the higher latitude regions of the globe, in particular the Arctic. Now looking close, more closely at this region of the globe, I'd like to call your attention to a Twitter post by Mika Ratnin and a map that he has posted from uh, the Met Desk and uh, WX, uh, WXCharts.com showing the 29 degrees Celsius reading or 84 degrees Fahrenheit reading at Archangel, which is along the Arctic coastline. Now, this temperature is approximately 20 degrees Celsius or 36 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for this time of year. So temperatures or high temperatures for this region at this time of year typically range in the mid to upper 40s Fahrenheit. And so, so or, or around the five to, to 10 degree Celsius reading range. And so, so what we're seeing right now is, is a very extreme departure be, uh, like, like it'd be similar to a a 100 to 105, uh, more like a 100 to 105 degree Fahrenheit reading for the Washington DC area in which uh, I'm reporting from. So, so a very, very extreme temperature departure for this time of year in May in the Arctic Ocean region. Now, what, what is the primary contributor to this extreme temperature anomaly in the, in the form of weather? We're gonna talk about some climate contributors for right now. I want to talk about what's driving this particular event at the surface. And looking at, I'm going to switch here to the upper level wind patterns 
that describe the jet stream. And what we are seeing in this region of the world is a high amplitude wave in the jet stream that is running far to the north and into the Arctic Ocean region. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse this map so we can see the persistence and progression of this particular jet stream wave. So I've reversed it all the way to, let's, let's just go back to the seventh so that you can see this jet stream wave pattern. So what we're seeing right now is a multi-day high amplitude jet stream wave pattern that is producing a strong ridge over the Eastern Europe region just west of the Urals. And this jet stream pattern remains in place, as you can see through the past couple of days into the present, and is also predicted to remain in place over at least the next three to four days. So these types of persistent extreme jet stream patterns are, are associated with extreme weather in the Northern Hemisphere. And they are also linked by scientists with a, a climate change related feature called polar amplification, which tends to warm the poles up faster than the lower latitudes. And what this results in is less temperature difference between the pole and the lower latitudes and this loss of temperature difference, uh, according to scientists like Dr. Francis, Dr. Jennifer Francis, and Dr. Michael Mann can contribute to these very wavy and persistent jet stream features. Now in the ridge zones, like we are seeing in this recent heat wave event in Eastern Europe near Archangel and along the Arctic coastline, these high amplitude ridge patterns can contribute to extreme heat, uh, well above normal temperatures, wildfires, and severe droughts if they persist for a long period of time. And what we're seeing right now is, is a heat wave, a uh, European, Eastern European heat wave in association with an extreme jet stream wave pattern, which has driven near Arctic Ocean temperatures to to much warmer than typical. Now, this is a concern for a number of reasons. We, we've recently seen Arctic sea ice take some relatively strong hits this time of year. And if you get a lot of heat transfer into the Arctic at this time of year, it can add risks for Arctic sea ice. Now, at present, we're not expecting a new record low for Arctic sea ice this summer, but uh, extreme heat waves in the Arctic can, can change uh, the, the projected course of summer Arctic sea ice very rapidly. So, so these patterns uh, and such a high level of heat transfer into the Arctic region is something that we want to keep track of. Now, another thing that is concerning with regards to these recent high amplitude jet stream wave patterns is the increased propensity for high latitude wildfires, which we've tended to see during recent years. And as you can see for this region of Eastern Europe and running into Russia along the warmer than usual tip, than typical temperature zone we see in association with this ridge, we do have a proliferation of, of thermal anomalies and, and hot spots that are associated with wildfires. We don't yet have an extremely intense wildfire outbreak for this region, but this prolifer proliferation of hotspots, particularly as we get into central Russia, is rather concerning. We do have a number of hotspots also in the Eastern Europe region associated with this heat wave. So, so something to, to keep track of. Now, one more, uh, bit of information that I'd like to share with you is, is a recent quote from Dr. Michael Mann, which provides the basis for this kind of analysis. Uh, I've been analyzing extreme jet stream wave patterns as and their potential association with climate change for a number of years now. 
And it appears that recently more and more the science is coming in line with the note that, the, there's, that there's a handshake between the polar warming that I'm talking about and, and the kind of extreme weather that we have tended to see during recent years. Dr. Mann notes that the extreme weather we're seeing around the Northern Hemisphere, such as heat waves, floods, droughts, and wildfires, is related to an unusual undulating pattern in the jet stream. The other part of this that's atypical is that this undulating pattern doesn't usually hold longer than a few, few days, but this one isn't going anywhere. Our work shows that this sort of pattern, which has been associated with many of the extreme, of the most extreme persistent weather events in recent years, including the 2003 European heat wave, the 2010 Moscow wildfires, the 2011 Texas and Oklahoma drought, and the 2016 Alberta wildfires, to name a few, is becoming more common because of human-caused climate change, and in particular, because of amplified Arctic warming. So this is a scientific basis for this analysis of this form of extreme weather, of which we are seeing now a more recent episode in which Arch Archangel hit 29 degrees Celsius or 84.2 degrees Fahrenheit today in association with a yet another extreme jet stream wave pattern running in through Eastern Europe and contributing to these much warmer, much hotter than normal temperatures. And, and this is an aspect, a likely aspect of, of extreme weather related to human caused climate change. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.